Hello and welcome to Fred Arts Projects Food and Art. We are on the fifth night of this incredible week-long fundraiser and we have raised all $5,000. Give yourselves a round of applause. We are so incredibly grateful for each of you. Thank you for being here as we join Kirk Irwin in the kitchen at The Perch. I'll let him introduce himself. Am I on? You're on. Hello and welcome. Oh, excellent. In art. Yeah. Whoops, I just heard something back. Anyway, hey, I'm Kirk, director of Friday Arts Project. Welcome to my kitchen in the perch, uh, my home with my wife, Sarah. Uh, we see this as a place where people can rest and see. And uh, tonight uh, we're doing a relatively quick brisket. This is a recipe that actually can be found in the cookbook that uh, we have put out for this year. And uh, this is a, a recipe that I got uh, via the marriage. I married into this recipe, actually. Uh, we did the tradition during our wedding preparations to have a recipe book uh, basically built for us. And people filled out three by five cards with various recipes. And one of them was from Sarah's mother, Sally. And it was on this barbecue brisket that she would do from time to time. And she has up here in the top right corner from David, Lubbock, Texas. And uh, that is Sarah's older brother. And uh, that's how they inherited it. I have no idea how David came across it, but uh, maybe we could do some research uh, in regards to that. This uh, recipe is actually a two day affair. You actually have to do uh, a marinade overnight. And then the next day you, uh, you can have a long cooking process. Uh, but uh, it's compared to most other smoking briskets overnight, it is a basically I consider it a quick brisket. And as I said, I wrote this, I think, in the cookbook. Pause quickly. Was that, you are the that? director of Friday Arts Project. Yes. Did that not come across? It did not. And you are oh. a mastermind in the kitchen and a poet. Well, thank you. Yes, I am. I apologize. I said some of that at the beginning, but I guess it didn't come through. Yes. Uh, I am an amateur poet more of an art, arts advocate. I, I just dabble in poetry, but uh, I love to read it though. So keep writing the good poetry. But uh, anyway, this uh, recipe uh, is uh, something that uh, I came through in my marriage. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna prepare the marinade and then actually put it on a piece of brisket meat. And then I'm going to do up the barbecue sauce that you do for uh, most of the way through the cooked brisket the next day. So the day before, this is what you want to do. You have basically three items for the marinade. You have uh, garlic salt. You can see that there. You have Worcestershire sauce or Lien and Perrin. And then this uh, device called liquid smoke. This is very powerful stuff and very good. There's actually a great video online, I think Facebook, where Alton Brown actually makes his own liquid smoke. It's actually kind of cool. I'd like to try my hand at it. So what you do uh, for the marinade is you take a half a teaspoon of garlic salt, put it in a small bowl. You don't need a big bowl for this because it's a very small amount. Yeah, let me move this since we've got other cameras. If this is a two-day recipe, did you start two days ago? No, I started yesterday, but you'll find out about that at the end, Vanessa. But uh -huh. yes, I did start it yesterday uh, to have one prepared. So we have a lot. We're gonna have a lot of brisket in this house, uh, but I don't. I don't. I don't mind. Anyway, so um, <laughs> if you have any questions as Kirk is talking and as this is happening, please feel free to drop them in the chat. Uh, we have some magic monitors happening and a lot of people behind the scenes making tonight come to you. So if you would like to ask anything about the recipe or about Kirk's poetry or about his beautiful wife, Sarah, I know he'd be very happy to answer any and all of those types of questions. Indeed, I would. So uh, I put the garlic salt in half a teaspoon. I did two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce and then you do two, that's right, two tablespoons of the liquid smoke. Let me put up that close real from one of the cameras. And uh, this is, whew, smells like wood. I like that. Anyway, all that right. Is, 
a little bit about who's behind the camera. We have an incredible cameraman tonight, Steve Pierce. He's a close friend. Another Steve. He's a close friend of the Irwins. Not the same Steve as last night, our sweet mm -hmm. giraffe friend. A different Steve, if you can believe it. There are two Rock Hill Steve cameramen uh, in our presence. But I would like to just show you a little trick. If we could get camera A real quick. You got to say something, Kirk. Something? That's camera A, right? Yeah, let me I see. I believe that's camera And then what we doing next? What camera? Let's see camera B. Tell me about camera B. <laughs> that right there? All right, that's camera B. Well, let me see a sweet angle from camera C. Whoa. Whoa, we're getting fancy. Okay, so you take the three items and that's it for this marinade. And you just mix them up and as much as you can. Wish I had a tiny whisk like Babish. Culinary people know my reference. Anyway, so this is as tiny a whisk I have, but you whisk this together. Man, I always love the smell of this thing. Uh, just that balance between smoke and uh, the, the Lee and Peran is just awesome. So you give that a little spin. Then you take your brisket, which I have here. Ooh, that's a nice piece of brisket right there. Where did and, you uh, acquire this beautiful piece of meat? I believe I got this one at Sam's Club. When it's when it's at Sam's, I, I buy the brisket because it's not there often. And uh, I throw it in the freezer because I know if I'm ever going to get in the mood for some liquid smoke and a marinade, and then uh, I'm going to use some, uh, some brisket. But uh, you then get your brisket and you take a nice couple pointed uh, fork and you go ahead and stab holes. Is this where you in, leave your anger towards all of my crazy comments and questions and ideas? Right. <laughs> Vanessa, I don't think I've ever been angry at you. Wow, I, I love that. Concerned, yes. I love, I love- Angry? Con what is the word for like consternation? No. Consternation? That's not the right word. Let's scratch that. Mm -hmm. from the record. Con like, All right. Thank you for being concerned for me. Yes, indeed. Uh, you can do both sides um, of the forking because this will be basically overnighting in your fridge. So uh, the more, well, the the more you can get holes on both sides, the more penetration there will be of the marinade as it sits overnight. So anyway, so you get that nice and aerated. If this were a lawn, you'd be aerating your lawn. Get off and my lawn. You, get off my lawn. And then uh, you take your marinade and you go ahead and try and get a nice even. It may not look like a mu much marinade. Whenever when I first did this and I poured this marinade, I'm like, that's not a lot. It just it seems to barely, you know, get on top of the meat, but it's plenty, believe me. So when you pour that on. When you inherited this recipe from Sweet Sally, did you mm -hmm. inherit it because you asked for it or because she served it to you, or it just came by by way of secret? wedding card recipe it just happened in to, on us in the uh cookbook so yeah i don't i don't complain at all it's uh our our way sarah and i's little way of having a little bit of taste a little taste of texas technically even though it's not smoked brisket actual smoked brisket we always i always ask for that when i go back to texas and i know sarah does not complain at all because the best brisket is in texas so, but yeah, it just happened to show up in our in our cookbook and I really didn't mind. Now you notice there, I flipped the meat over again too. So you pour the marinade on top, you kind of make sure it gets moved around and whatnot. And then uh, what I do here, and I don't have this ready, is you then cover this with um, uh, aluminum foil, tin foil, and then you put it in your refrigerator for overnight. Okay, so that then is your day before. You throw it in the fridge, let it sit there, and it gets this nice marination from the very, very strong and wonderfully pungent uh, liquids, and you have your marinade. So the next day, 
um, about four or five hours, actually no, about five hours before you wanna eat it. So it's probably good to plan ahead, uh, maybe on a weekend, or you could try doing this at a lower temperature in a longer time. That's not necessarily a terrible thing, but you, uh, you take the, uh, your brisket out, you go ahead and set your oven at three, 325, and then you put it in the oven. And then uh, after two hours in the oven, you go ahead and flip the meat over, take it out, flip it over, leave the tin foil on, put it back in the oven for a couple of more hours. And in that time, what you do is you prepare the barbecue sauce that is going to go on top for the last hour on top of the cooked brisket. So for that, you need a lot more things. And the first thing I'm going to do is going to take a little bit of onion, onion, and you basically uh, average portion of this is about a quarter of a cup, but you can give or take that depending on how much you want onion. And you can use any onion. Uh, you can use red or, or sweet or white or yellow. It doesn't really matter. Uh, whatever you want. You can play. You can try shallots. I got a bunch of shallots I was actually thinking about using. But um, you go ahead and take your onion. And I that's about half of a medium onion, medium to large onion. And that's probably going to be about enough. I don't know if you can see that. But one of the ways this is you can cut this, you want to basically get it into tiny pieces, cubes. One of the ways I did do this, I don't know if you can actually see this. I learned this from watching cooking shows, but you, you can actually cut it into half, then little strips down each way there. And then you kind of do this, put your hand on top. If you, cut little slits one above the other as you go up the side of the onion, not all the way through else you're gonna lose it. And then you should have little cubes when you, wow, when you cut it this way. Are you guys seeing so, that? And then you just sort of take off the edges here. So this is the quarter cup of onion. It's a nice little trick I actually saw multiple times and I finally tried it myself when I watched it on TV and uh, so I thought I can do that. You so guys, that's a little bit more than a quarter cup, but I don't really care. It's onion and I love onion. So yes, Denissa. You got a question here uh, from our fuzzy. He said, did you have to take out a second mortgage for that piece of meat? <laughs> well, Sam's, uh, when you get it at Sam's Club, uh, you don't have to, but um, yes, brisket can be expensive. So. That's why I get it at Sam's because it's a little cheaper. But uh, cool about Kirk too and his wife Sarah, uh, all the things are cool about them. But one of the things I love about them is their love for local businesses. And though this meat came from Sam's Club, I know Kirk is a part of a local meat share, actually with the cameraman and some other people in the community. So can you tell us a little bit about that while you are doing your next step? Yeah, uh, the next thing uh, I'll be putting in are various. Uh, aspects of the barbecue sauce i'll need i'll put mustard oil worcestershire sauce brown sugar a little bit of water and ketchup but yeah um when uh, my wife and i lived down in orlando i started doing research at local local sources down there for meats locally raised animals whether uh cows or pigs or whatnot and because i wanted to us to have investment in that as far as give our money to something locally and there in a place that I knew would take care of the, the beasts, take uh, respect them, raise them well. And uh, I wanted to do that, but then we moved up here to uh, Rock Hill about soon after I started doing that research. And I just did the research up here and I found Watson Farms down in Chester County, one county down. And uh, they uh, have very subscriptions of monthly or bi-monthly and uh, depending on how much pound did you want. And uh, we do that on a bi-monthly basis and it's been great. We, we have no idea what cut, uh, cuts of pieces we're gonna get. And I don't mind doing that because it stretches me as far as learning how to cook various pieces of meat. But it's been very good stuff, very good beef, very good pork. And, and we also get some chicken from time to time. So yeah, that's kind of how we wanna do. We know it's locally raised and respected. They post videos about how they do things down there at Watson Farms. And uh, I love their meat and I love what they stand for. And I love being able to support something locally. 
they did brisket, I would take brisket from them. That's awesome. Okay, so. It's a cool element to the many layers of arts organizing we do here in Rock Hill. The, the partnership with local businesses, I mean, and with local entities to keep kind of financial stuff happening and thriving in Rock Hill. Right, indeed. Okay, so I take a good mustard. Now, uh, this is a good, I love a good yellow mustard but you can use any mustard, but you need two tablespoons. And this is of course French's, which I also enjoy on hot dogs with sweet relish and onions. Um, so you get two tablespoons of mustard, um, two tablespoons of an oil. In this case, I've got a good avocado oil that uh, I use quite commonly. So we get two of those. Then uh, you need some more, because there's not enough Worcestershire sauce in the marinade, you need more for the barbecue sauce. So you get two tablespoons of that. It's a pretty simple recipe. Do you know where Miss Sally got it from? Well, her, her son, David, brought it back from Lubbock, but I'm not sure where he got it from. Um, we might have to ask her uh, next time we see her. She might even be on. We tried to ask her to come on here. Maybe she could tell us yes, where she got it. So, Miss Sally, if you can hear me, uh, let us know where you got this recipe from in the comments. Uh, we would love to know a little bit more about the history. Okay, so you also do two tablespoons of brown sugar. I'm going to eyeball this because it's a barbecue sauce. I mean, if you miss a little bit of brown sugar and you get a little bit more in there, oh my gosh, it's a little sweeter. How terrible. Anyway, so generally you want about two tablespoons or there in of brown sugar. I love that measurement, or there in. <laughs> there in, that's right. Uh, and then a little bit of water. And I'm going to do the same thing over here at our water filter. Just eyeball it. About two tablespoons of water. And then half a, th this is the big one, a quarter or half a cup of ketchup. Now you can play with this. I mean, there are, I, one of the last times I went and bought to buy ketchup, I noticed they have all kinds of ketchup with various spices in them. So you could play with it depending on, I mean, see it as a canvas. You got, Hey, you want to change and make it a little hotter, get one of the hotter sriracha ketchups or something. Ooh, nice noise on that one. But um, so you want about a quarter or a half, sorry, half a cup. So you, you've seen all the shows, obviously, this week that we've done the digital dinner parties, and we've mm -hmm. come up with a few food controversies. What is your take on the Southern barbecue situation? Like, are you a vinegar guy, a mustard guy? Um, you know, I am, I'm, I'm, I like all of it. I hate to say, and I'm not trying to please everybody, but I'm like, why is there a controversy? They're all good. <laughs> they all have their own. <laughs> hey, if they want to fight while I have a, a moment oh, to take their barbecue it. and eat it, then I'm going to do it while they're distracted fighting each other is over which is the better barbecue. But I'm in South Carolina. So any barbecue from South Carolina is the best. That's right. Uh, such a diplomatic answer. <laughs> so there, that's everything. Um, so you got the onion, the ketchup, a little bit of water, brown sugar, Worcestershire sauce, oil, and mustard. And you just sort of give that a stir. Now you can also prepare this the night you do the marinade and just let it sit overnight, which would be great because then all the, all the flavors will marry together, get to know each other a little bit. And... Uh, so you get this nice, oh, I love this color of, um, my wife could probably tell you exact, the exact technical name of this color because she's very good at that. So yeah, what would Sarah, you call that, dear? Sarah, let us know what color this is. What also, color is that? I think it's a caramel. I'm going to say caramel. Yeah. We'll see what it says. It's a burnt umber, a little, little bit. Oh, closer. Oh, see? What color is that? Everybody put their, their thoughts. What color is that? Is that a not really orange it's not really red what is it what is it all right so there's the barbecue sauce and uh, and what you do then is um 
the, the next day after it's marinated, you have it in the oven. After two hours, you take the brisket, you flip it over, put it back in the oven for a couple of hours more. Then after the four or five, depending on the uh, where you want the doneness, you uh, take it out four hours and you pour this wonderful, luscious, we don't know what color it is, barbecue sauce. We know what color it is. It's sort oh. of a dull burnt sienna. Oh, dull burnt sienna. So you take this dull burnt sienna sauce. I wonder what country that would barbecue sauce would be from. And, and you pour that. <laughs> so MC Churchill Nash says it's also burnt sienna. You know it's ah. right. Okay, we got two artist confirmation that is burnt sienna. So this would be cooked and you just pour that over top and then you just can take a spatula and make sure it gets over every part of it. And of course you've taken the tin foil off. If you put the sauce on top of the tin foil, it doesn't touch them. And then you just don't put the tin foil back on, you put it back in the oven for 45 minutes. And then after 45 minutes, due to a little TV magic, You should have something like this. Wow, look how good that looks, people. Don't don't let the dark uh, stuff fool you. That is good stuff right there, man. You mix that up and you get a nice little sauce. It's with two pieces of brisket that I did in one. This is about four pounds, four to five pounds. I forgot to say, that's about what you want for that. That's about four pound brisket. This is about four or five pounds. So, 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 this, so the, the magic that you just showed us is what happens after you have seasoned it and let it soak and poured all the stuff over it. So how long has mm -hmm. that been sitting? Uh, I got this out of the oven uh, mirror within the last 30 minutes, I think. So, oh, so I had it, I go, took it out about an hour and a half ago, poured the barbecue sauce over top, the burnt sienna barbecue sauce and uh, put it back in the oven for 45 minutes. Now let's see what it looks like, shall we? We shall. Also, I got a hot take on where the recipe came from. Miss Sally uh, says David had a friend who was also attending Tech U and he got the recipe from his friend. And then she says, my son-in-law, Tim, says it was a recipe that was popular among the Baptist churches in Lubbock, Texas. Ooh, so there's some church background to this sauce. Okay, ooh, that fat got nice and sticky at the bottom. That's fine. I don't mind that actually. So you take this out and Let's see, is that good on the camera there, Steve? All right, that way? All right, well, let me do this. Yeah, that's not hot, I can do that. Woo! All right, Your it says- put... It's a caramelization, a spiritual sauce, hallelujah. There you go. All right, let me see if I can uh, get the cut on this side here. Actually, uh, this is just falling apart. Oh gosh, that usually, is not the way I eat it, or I've seen it eaten, but all right, this is not cutting right. All right. Like we've said all week, we're all in this together. So you've seen it here first on Food and Art uh, Digital There Dinner. you go. This is actually falling apart because it's been sitting in the oven at that temperature. You can play with this. Um, if you wanna, it says 325. If you wanted to lower the temperature, you'd have to leave it in longer. Um, so if you wanted to put it in in the morning, I'd put it at the lowest temperature and come back and see where it is at the end of the day. And, uh, cause low and slow is also not bad. So this is the brisket, the church brisket from Lubbock, Texas. Let me see if I can taste it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'll I'm take so it. Jealous. My stomach is grumbling. But the best part about this is that I live down the street from Kirk Irwin. And for celebration, which we love here on our team, we will be eating this brisket on Sunday. The days cannot turn faster to get to brisket town. Um, but as you are cutting it and all of these things are happening, what would you normally serve with this meal in particular? Well, it depends on what part of the country you're from. But um here in South Carolina, if we were doing up brisket, you'd probably have to have some sort of beans with it, I would think. Um, Texas, um, well, whatever you have as a side, whether coleslaw or whatnot, it's going to have to be big because it is in Texas. 
maybe we can have if uh, my in-laws are on. Maybe uh, Sally or Tim can tell tell us what we could have as a side with this brisket. But we actually have a side barbecue chicken. I've had barbecue chicken with Tim, as a matter of fact, because he cooked it all as a side with the brisket. That's very that's very valuable. Stacy Anderson just popped on and said, "Great job on the brisket, bro." <laughs> Thank you, sister. I appreciate it. But that's pretty much it. Um, if you were uh, living nearby, I would probably invite you over to help us eat all this brisket, but I'm not going to say that because I want to eat it all myself. And pandemic. <laughs> we're coming out on the other side of that. Come on. Anyway. Brandy says so, side of meat. That's all everybody could want. Who said that? Brandy. Oh, yeah. And exactly. this guy said potato salad and baked beans is the best way to serve the brisket. Yes. A good baked bean would be good. And she does make a great potato salad. But all right. So you can find this uh, recipe in the Food and Art a recipe book designed by my wife, Sarah. And uh, you can also get a little bit of the brief history of how I acquired it from, oh, from that one. So a little bit, yeah, a little there higher. There we go, a little <laughs> higher. Getting the camera work used to here. So do we have, are they all sold out, Denison? Yeah, do we have one so, left. There's one left. left. Who left. wants this one? Please buy it, <laughs> help us sell out. Uh, That's right. One left and it can be yours. This is a limited edition, 100 print, volume one, food and arts, first ever cookbook Fred Arts Project has made. Like Kirk said, from our lovely designer, Sarah Kennedy Irwin. If you were here on Wednesday night, let us know in the comments if you enjoyed her talk. She did such a great job. Um, any last words, Kirk? Are we are we calling it a day? I think that's it. You cooked that baby that's in all I, got. I did. Well, <laughs> it doesn't cook technically in 30 minutes. Come on. Yeah, yeah. You you use some 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 Matt Cosper magic and it uh That's it right. Indeed. Indeed. Well, we are so excited that you joined us. Thank you so much for being here. Kirk, thank you for a great brisket from your mother-in-law and from your wife and your family. Uh, we love recipes that include uh, so much history. If you would give it up for Kirk in the comments, our fearless leader, incredible poet and great thinker, a man uh, well ahead of his time, always uh, moving at a very methodical pace uh, with whiskey in hand. So. Uh, wouldn't want to be led by anyone else here in Rock Hill. We're so grateful that you're here. If you haven't heard, uh, tonight's the last night. So if you want to hop over on the Zoom room with us at eight o'clock, you can grab your tickets at FridayArtsProject.org forward slash shop and scroll all the way to the bottom to today, uh, May 29th. We will be in the Zoom room with Josette Adebaye of Hasat Gune. She's coming all the way from Izmir, Turkey. Uh, and for us, it's her... Uh, there's so much about her. You'll hear it more if you get your ticket, but she uh, is staying up until 3 a.m. to join us, uh, her time in Turkey. So you're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be a great talk. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook and now on YouTube. Uh, every platform you can find us at Friday Arts Project and check it out. Thank you so much for your help this week and we'll see you at eight in the Zoom room. <laughs>